Hello and welcome yet again to part six of the Deep Q learning tutorial. Super excited because now we will really be wrapping up the first, like the original uh, Deep Q network paper and finish implementing everything, at least everything that we're going to implement that was in that paper and get some pretty good results. And not only get some pretty good results, this time we are going to show you them. So before we actually look directly at maybe some visualizations of the environment, first, I want to improve this a little bit. So as it turns out, there's actually something we can do to still improve this further. Well, there's lots of things. There's one very easy thing that will improve it very dramatically though. And that is what's called using a target network. And what essentially people found out when they were making this algorithm is that remember, this is our original loss function. And this is happens to be very unstable. And the reason why is because not only are we, so this is supposed to be an estimate for our actual Q value, right? And this is supposed to be the prediction for our Q value. Well, the thing is the, not only the target and sorry, the target and the S and the prediction are both moving at the same time because our Q, our deep Q network is used in both the starting part, like the basically both sides of this equation, which can make it really unstable and very slow to learn um, just because everything's moving around so much. So what people found is that for this part of the equation, if you actually use a separate network that only, that basically mirrors your actual Q network, but receives updates less frequently, you can actually do a lot better. And what I say, what I mean when I say updates less frequently is essentially that we'll make a copy of our DeepQ network. And then every once in a while, every so steps, uh, every so many steps, we copy the parameters from our original model over to our target network is what it's called. And that way this isn't so variable all the time. This actually makes a huge difference. So I do want to show just sort of the formula that you would see in a paper that would kind of tell you this. Let me grab that real quick. Should be not there. Where did I put it? Oh, I know where I put it. I put it back to our DQN right here. Oh, there's spoilers. There's more stuff here. <laughs> I have a lot more planned. So let's just grab that and put it with all our other equations. So what you can see is this is essentially our new loss function, basically the same thing, except for, you'll notice that I put a semicolon and then a theta sort of prime, I guess, right here. And here we have a semicolon theta. Now, what this actually means is we're using Q network with these, or, or a Q network with these parameters. And this is just a way to differentiate and show that these two Q functions are, are two different Q functions. They use different parameters. Um, this one is the parameters for our target network, and this is for our primary network. And this is how you often see this kind of thing expressed in papers. So just wanted to show you in case it's something you ever encounter. So luckily, this is actually super easy to implement. The first thing we want to do is come down here to where we make our model, and we want to essentially copy it to make a target model. So target model is we're literally just doing a copy dot deep copy of the model. Make sure it is a deep copy, not a shallow copy, because you don't want it being updated together or that ruins the whole point, right? So we're going to come now back up here and we're going to add one more sort of variable here, calling it target update delay. And this is how many time steps in between target model updates. I like that S there. And we're going to use 10,000 steps. Can you guess why? That is what was used in the paper. Surprise, surprise. So now we can come down here. And what that actually means is that every 10,000 steps, we want to copy those parameters over. Now I say copy those parameters over, but I am lazy. So I'm literally just going to copy the entire model. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, I don't think it takes that long and it's only every 10,000 steps shouldn't hurt our efficiency too much. So we check if global steps. So if this isn't the first step, you know, step zero, and it is, modulo target update delay. So every 10,000 steps, we want to recopy our model to be our target model, our target model to be our model, um, at least the parameters. They're still separate entities though. So now that we have that, what we need to do is update our actual train on bash function, right? Because now 
not only do we need to get the Q function, the Q function of this network, we need the target Q function. So how are we going to do that? Well, you know, as you might have guessed, we just take it in as a parameter. So what did I call it here? I call it target model here. Surprise, surprise, target model. And all we have to change, I believe, is this. Instead of doing for our for our estimate, right? Instead of using this DQ in to produce the key values, we just use our target model. It is that simple. Super easy, super nice and easy. And now all we have to do, I mean, I keep saying all we have to do, I guess there's still more we have to do, uh, but we need to update our, where we call this right here, right? We pass an optimizer and now we also want to pass in target model. So it's going off screen now. So I'll do a little, boop, boop, boop. wow, so nice. <laughs> So now what we are doing, let me let me think. I think that should be everything. Yeah. So let's see if this works. Essentially what should happen is we clone the model, creating a target model. Every 10,000 steps, we should update it. And then when we actually train, now we should be training using this target model and not just our main model. So let's actually go back and run this and see what happens. Oh no. RMS prop has no forward. Why are we using, are we passing the wrong thing? Oh, am I doing it in the wrong order possibly? Don't train on batch, what did I put up here? Did I put target model first? I did, I'm gonna change that. So no, I'm gonna keep that and change it down here just so it's consistent with my reference. That's, I keep forgetting to mention, if you do wanna follow along with the code, I have a link to the code in the about section. Um, as you can see over here, you know, it's basically the same thing, um, except for maybe even a little bit cleaner <laughs> and with a couple more comments. So now if we try running this, oh, ho, ho, what is that? It seems to be working. I mean, running at least, I guess we don't technically know if it's working yet. Um. Did I, how much did I increase this epsilon last time? I'm gonna turn that back down. That seems like too much to me. <laughs> what do I, what do I use in my, um, let me check what I use here. Oh no, I do use this. Huh? Oh, it's because we're printing out more frequently than I'm used to. So as with the last sort of tutorial I did, there is the issue of this takes a long time to run. So I could pause this and come back in three hours, but I don't wanna do that. So I've prepared it in advance. So let's bring, let's stop this for now. And let me show you the results I got. So let's first remember the results we got from the last one. So without the target network, we had 2,000, no, 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 it was 3,300, I believe, episodes. Episodes led to, how? what was it? It was about nine to 10 reward on average. We'll just say about 9.5, you know, split the difference there. Um, so that's what we got. Now, let's bring this over. This is using the target network. And let's see, so I trained on 2000 episodes and got 23, at one point even 25 average reward. It's crazy, that's a crazy difference. Two thirds, less than two thirds of the time and we're doing over two times as good. So you can see why people use target models. Um, you should absolutely use it. Um, not using it would be just crazy. It really improves the performance. Um, so I would, again, if th that's why you know it's such a simple change, uh, yet you see such a great difference. That's why it's so cool, I think. So anyway, that's awesome. But how do we actually see our progress happening? Now I didn't train the model in here, but what I do have is I have a way to load it up. So let's first load up our model that I have saved. So this should load the model, and this should be our break out, right? So this should be the, this should be the model I trained over here. And now what we want to do, I'm going to move this back over here, is we want to be able to render an example. So I'm not going to go through this because it's basically the same as the training loop, except for the stuff that actually does the training. So it's just plays through the game. One thing you might notice, I changed the epsilon to 0 0.05. That's what they did in the paper for testing. Um, it's also just nice to lower your epsilon for actual testing just because it tends to perform better. So hopefully this works. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, there we go. Okay. 
It's got one. Okay. Okay. I'm, you know, I'm going to say, let's sit back and sort of watch an episode of this play out. We, we have some time. At least I do. You can always fast forward past this, I guess, if you don't want to watch it. But I don't know. I think it's cool to see the fruits of your labor um, come out like this. You remember when we we're doing this randomly, we were only getting one or two blocks at most. Um, and now look at this champion play. Wow. Up to 15. Oh, he missed two in a row. That's, that's sad. Oh, up to 19. 20. I'm curious if we'll actually pass 25. One ball left. Oh, okay. Here's something it does sometimes I noticed. It got stuck. Oh, there it goes. Okay. 22. Not, not half bad, I'd say. Not bad at all. So I could have kept training this, right? I only trained for 2,000 games, which is not a lot in reinforcement learning terms. And you probably keep getting better and better results, I want to believe. I believe in the actual paper, they got somewhere around like 100 or 200 something. I'm not exactly sure if my implementation can get that far. You'd have to test it out, which feel free to. Um, it certainly may though, I'm, I'm not sure. Sorry if there is a little noise in the background now. My family just got home and the dogs are being very loud. So I'll try to finish this up quick. I don't wanna have this delayed too long. But essentially what we can do now is not only can we watch our agent play out, but we can see how it does over time. So this is a quick little script. Um, it's, it's just Python, so I'm not gonna go over the details, but it's just essentially printing out our average reward smoothed out. So here I do 50, we could do like one would be no smoothing. And this is this is for the agent we just trained, right? So it's not doing too well. 50 would uh, smooth it over 50 different um, episodes. But what I want to show you is how well it did in this train model. And as you can see, it doesn't do too well until it hits a certain threshold and then it skyrockets upwards. So this certainly could have, this trend could have kept going. I'm not sure if it would have or not, but you know, it's pretty amazing. I think the fact that we can start with, you know, such a simple idea um, and get such cool results. And as you saw there, there if you want to save your model, you can do like a model.save and then save this to like whatever, you know, your model name dot PyTorch. And that will save the model. You could also, yeah, I mean, that should work. Um, you know, so this is really cool. This is sort of, I think, uh, a good checkpoint in this series as to where we have the first DQN fully implemented. Uh, I don't think there's anything we're missing out here. Now, there are still improvements to this, as you might have seen in my little spoilers a second ago. But I have a lot more equations for uh, other methods of improving it. So in the future, we'll be covering things like double and dueling DQNs, hopefully prioritized experience replays. If you don't know what these mean, don't worry about it. That's what my videos are for. Um, but there's a lot more to cover. And I ideally want to cover this sort of the future for this series. I really want to cover this all the way to state of the art um, and implement state of the art methods, just because I think that'd be super cool to see like, you know, um, I think it'd be super cool if I could help you guys, anyone that can't sort of, you know, because ideally you're coming here because maybe you haven't seen this before or aren't fully grasping the concept yet. And this should be some good practical experience. I want to be able to help people sort of understand when they look at these state of the art papers and they have no clue what's going on, maybe help you get a feel for how to read those, how to look at these equations and understand what's going on They're all the way up here. Um, and then how to go and actually implement those. So that's sort of the idea for the future of this series. I will be continuing it. There shouldn't be, heck, there shouldn't be any gaps at all, actually. Um, so definitely look forward to the next episode. Thank you for tuning in. All the code for this and more should be in the description of this video. If you did like this, you know, it takes a lot of time to, you know, get this all prepared. You know, write these equations out in latex is absolutely awful. Um, but, you know, I, I, it's, it's still fun, um, but it takes time. So if you do appreciate it, definitely leave a like and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. And thanks for tuning in.